The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May 7th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. You and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, our Tigers done any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 465 points, trading out at 25,966. That's down one and eight tenths percent. S&P down a similar percentage, which is 49 points. NASDAQ 100 off 2% now, 159. So it's mean and red across the board, meaning green in the spot volatility. It's up 30% today. That's $4.76, trading out at 2020. Gold is Basically flat, it's up two bucks. Silver totally flat. Light sweet crude off 85 cents. Uh, bonds moving higher, moving higher dollar wise. It's uh, with the uh, iTron. It's up 21 percent or 11 bucks. Not sure what's behind that move. Um, Everest Real Estate Group. Mount Everest up 4% or nine bucks and change. Solar Edge Technologies up 10 or 21 percent. Beyond Meat. Uh, thing is a uh, seems to be a rocket ship up 12 percent nine dollars today don't worry that little rocket ship will go back and retest its lows from its ipo you just gotta be patient ipos just don't open up and take off and keep going north sellers will eventually get their chance to try to crush the stock it could take a while but those lows will be tested. Hey, to the downside, you've got Amazon off 36 bucks, Mercado Libre down 27, Google off 18, Regenerant Pharmaceuticals off about 19 buckaroonies. So let's start with our first question out here. First question coming in, asking, where is that question? Uh, uh, can I address the, or can I review the ES Mini? Uh, the two hour and the five hour charts, any uh, Chapman Wave counts or technical? technicals indicating a further decline likely. So we'll cover those charts, but to answer that question, what I need to do is probably take a look at a few other things with you as well. So for example, uh, let's go ahead and, and yes, daily too. Yeah, Peter, we're, we're going to cover it all here. Let's just simply take a look at the ES Mini. Let's get to the initial question. Can we anticipate uh, price moving lower? Here's a 30-minute time frame chart. It shows that we're back, in essence, to yesterday's lows. Quite frankly, we're just slightly below that. We're in the process, or it's in the process, on a 30-minute basis. Uh, it actually completed the TD9 count. It did that as we came on the air at 1 o'clock. Now, the 8th bar bar on this count was the lowest low, but we know that that lowest low in this pattern, if it's going to identify a shorter term bottom 
for you, John, that would occur by 130, meaning that at 130, whatever that low is, that low does not get penetrated because that reversal can take place on bars 8, 9, or 10. We're going to, at this stage here, it would be bar number 10, so to speak, the bar following 9. So keep that in mind because if at 130 to 2, you get a move lower out there, that would suggest to me at least short term, no, on a short term basis, no bottoming signal out here. So that would be one thing I would be looking for. You had specifically asked about the two-hour time frame. Let's go take a look at the two-hour time frame, see if there's any any technical indicators out here. And there is at the moment, they're in the last bar. Let me just see what my settings are out here. Give me a moment. What I don't know is if I have my settings on my tool set to basically on the bar close or if it's intercession out here. In this case, it was intercession. So let me turn that on now. What I'm looking for is to see if there's a black line drawn to the newer low out here on the two-hour time frame. Now that that's a bottom, but the question was, is there any kind of indication, you know, from the tools that I use? And what you will see here is prices moving lower, doing a less relative energy. Now that alone is not a bottom signal. You need to see some type of bullish reversal candle that's formed. Um, so we would have to come back. Now the two-hour time frame chart. John, that I'm looking at, the current candle session completes at 2 p.m. So it wouldn't be till 4 p.m. where we would get the signature that some type of bottom is in. Uh, only in wave four as I see it, uh, but that's all the way from the highs out here that formed uh, back on uh, April the uh, 30th. Um, you know, it's what it looks like to me. Um, TD set up nine count out there. Uh, helping to identify the top. So there's a possibility in the two-hour time frame chart. We'll have to see what that session, it would look like from two to four, looks like out here. Five-hour time frame chart, if we pull this over, I don't see anything or I don't see anything just yet. Is it possible that what the ES Mini is doing here on a five-hour time frame chart is setting up a, a three drive to a bottom pattern? You know, if it is that third drive, in essence, would come in at a price level at about 28.72. Uh, that would be your A to B equals CD of, of potentially drive number three. Let me see if this tool is uh, operating. Here's what that three to three drive. Uh, no, just give me a moment here. Right now, it's not picking everything up, but it will. It will. It will after I do one little thing out here. Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes that's the way that it uh, just simply rolls out here. So it's going to take just a, a moment here, John, for this chart to update. But you're very familiar with the three drive to a bottom patterns. Now, for Stevie's sake, and, and here it shows up, but that's not, you know, I gave you a price point of uh, 28 72 something like that. Um, you know, somewhere somewhere in that range, it looks pretty. So I would be watching for this too. Now, in the five-hour time frame chart, in order for a three drive to a bottom or a top to form for me, it too needs some type of bullish reversal signal. This candle on the five-hour time frame for my tools and charting software. This will go ahead and complete at 2 p.m. The next bar is going to go from two until the close, so it doesn't get a full. Uh, five hours in there, um, but then it, res it, it restarts um, uh, as far as the uh, bars. It restarts when the equity futures contract opens. So when we get back from this break, John, there's there is the uh, there is the uh, uh, question. There's there's the answer to the question for your two hour and five hour charts. We're going to take a look at what Peter wants to the daily time frame chart. We'll look at the TAS profiles, but even something more important, John and everybody else, that you have to consider has to do something with the spot volatility index. Figure out what that is during the break. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so Dow's off about almost 500, uh, S and P down 52 points, and we're taking a look at the uh, we're taking a look at the ES Mini. So uh, first, uh, let's go to Peter who was asking about the the daily time frame chart. Let's throw a couple of things out here, and then we'll go to uh, to the Spot VIX index, and you know I'll, I'll share with you an observation that that really needs to be taken a uh, look at. Now we take a look at the we know that the the ES Mini uh, made that seventh wave move we know that it generated that roads momentum indicator top out here and uh, we know that there's an a to b equal cd to the downside pattern and uh, the next move to the downside is also 2872 so we looked at 2872 john uh, that was using actually a different set of data points for an A to B equals CD that was on a five-hour time frame chart than what we've generated here. So that's kind of interesting, but probably just simply a coincidence out there. Um, so, uh, and, and price does not need to stop here. You've got the, could be the 1.618, it could be the two level, could be 2.618. Uh, that's really some ultimate support for the ES Mini. Ultimate after we take a look at profiles, which was the beginning of its most recent TD setup nine count, it creates that horizontal line on my screen that takes us to the uh, price level of 27.95. Uh, so until we see some type of bottoming pattern out here, that remains in play, Peter, on the uh, daily time frame chart. Now, what we also want to do is we want to take a look at, and you asked, you know, are there new profiles out here? And let's look at the ES Mini this way. And when I say this way, we're looking at four time frames. Uh, so you've got the daily in the upper left, you've got the weekly in the upper right, you've got the monthly in the lower left and the quarterly, that's right, quarterly chart in the upper right. So here's what we know. Right now, Peter, at 120, we can see that price is below 28.94.50. I know it says 53, but that's an impossibility for the ES Mini. 
So any close below 28.9450 today is going to signal to you and I that we have a change in trend. Yesterday was another test of the bottom of a profile that held. Uh, let me go ahead and just simply move this and mark, whoops, mark that in on this. Uh, that's this candle right here. We've had, that was its sixth occurrence. I guess uh, I got to add a couple of more here. But, but uh, uh, Peter, if we see a close below that 2894 level, the signal is a change in trend. Now, just using profiles and trying to identify where price would target, well, there is a new profile for the weekly time frame. And that bottom of its box is 2858. So that would be the next key level of support out here, right? One thing at a time. What's the monthly tell us? The monthly says, okay, we're back potentially inside the range. It's only May 7th, so we don't know if that is the case or not out here. But we do know on a quarterly basis that uh, prices stayed with inside that quarterly profile. Interesting, isn't it, that the bottom of the profile on a quarterly basis was a level of support out here? Yeah. So this would say, just simply going like this, let's assume, well, let's not assume, what you and I know is we're in a consolidation in the general marketplace out there, and we know that just simply by taking a look at the uh, Dow. So I don't want to, you know, pull that up, but, but that's what we know. What we all, And if we're in a consolidation, price can go down to the bottom of the consolidation. Well, in the ES Mini, it would be in the 23, 27 to 24, 67 area. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. Now, what's the fly in the ointment out here? So this covers the profiles, gives you an idea as to where we're at. Again, 28.94.50 is an important level today. Close below that, suggest that price is headed to 28.58. You get below 28.58, then 28.28. That becomes the point of control on the monthly profile out here. And that's how we would go ahead and use profiles to assist us in identifying possible places of where price will head to and, and perhaps find some support out there. Here's the problem, folks. Here is the absolute problem. And the problem is this. When I put this chart up on my screen... And when I put the data that is in the top part of the screen, what is it that sticks out to you? What is it that sticks out to you? Now, here's the focus. I want you to look at the price of the spot volatility index. Right now, it says 2069, liable to change by a penny or, to, a penny or so out here. It says 2069. Look at all the other numbers. Now, at the bottom of my screen, we start with the May spot volatility index futures contract, then go to June, July, August, September, October, November, December. What's the price of December? What's the price of November? What's the price of October? What's the price of September? What's the price of August? How about July? How about even May? May, we're in May. You see, when there, there, there is a dislocation, when the spot volatility index is trading above all of its futures contracts, as it was yesterday, as it is today, it tells you, folks, if you are short, please put stops in place. This is telling you about a slingshot move that could be ginormous out here. If this was a real move, and not that it's not real, but if it was really a real move, the futures contracts for the spot volatility index would not be priced below what the current uh, knee-jerk reaction is inside the market out here. Yes, we looked at a top inside the ES Mini. Again, a lot of people, they well, most people don't really, that I see, don't really use the spot volatility index for all the great tools that it provides us, such as a one-day rate of change, like 34.46% right now. You know, that's important. Such as the 50-day moving average, which is 1447. But here is another one of those elements and tools. And so, John, you say you covered too early, and, of course, you made money. Maybe, maybe not. Just be aware of this, and then watch those other short-term patterns out here. Now, this can persist for a while. It can persist for days. But that's why I say put stops in place and just simply, you know, continue to move them down if you're short, uh, especially if you're trading the futures markets. You're kind of screwed if you're trading the ETFs out there. 
um, because you know you could see a bottom uh, interest you know during during the evening or early morning out there, and then of course by the time you get a chance to place a trade, you know you're 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 screwed. I think was the word that I used out there. So, uh, but either way, still go ahead and use uh, stops. And how do we know? How do we know that when the spot volatile mix is? It, I used to have to track all this stuff so manually, um, and uh, thank gosh I don't have to do that now. But here's just an example of the spot volatility index compared to its uh, six-month uh, counterpart out here. And all these bottoms or potential bottoms where you get these counter-trend rallies, they form when that ratio gets out of whack. And as we speak right now, 126 in the afternoon, it is out of whack. And therefore, John and everybody else is very right to be looking for some signals out here that says that, okay, the move is uh, lower. But you'll have more information, most certainly, between this 1.30 and 2 o'clock session as we were looking at that ES Mini, which could be forming a TD setup nine count out there. So, uh, Peter, I hope that helps answer your question. Um, and uh, you had uh, two out of the three things in the spot volatility or in the, in the VIX index as far as what to look for. Make sure you add this one too, because it's a huge tell in the markets. Dowza 520. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our first email question out here. This one coming in from uh, Mike in uh, Merrimack, New Hampshire. Mike writes in, says, hey, Steve. Hey, Mike. Nokia is a ticker symbol, by the way, that we're, or Nokia is a company, and OK is a ticker symbol that we're going to take a look at. I'll go ahead and pop that up on the screen here so you can see the three different time frames. Mike's question goes like this. Some sources recommend going long. However, the chart looks bearish to me. Uh, what do your tools indicate? Please note, if looking at a one-year daily chart, where is a swing low from August 15, 2018 with a close at 509? Is this meaningful? Okay, let's see if we can try to figure this out. Now, here's what we know right off of the bat with regard to Nokia. Again, ticker symbol NOK, and it's and it's a daily, weekly, monthly, and quite frankly, quarterly a set of profiles. You're below the daily, you're below the weekly, you're below the monthly, which was 523. And the next up on the uh, move down as far as a profile level would be the point of control for the quarterly time frame, which is 467 out here. You were mentioning something like on a one-year basis going back to August of 2015, I see December of 2017, which is an area. Now, this is just on a monthly chart out here, Mike, that is going to come into play before you get back to November of 2016. You're asking about August of 2018. Where is the 2018? August of 2018. So you're in here, which price is already below that level. Um, let me open up the daily time frame chart. And so, you know, look, here's your August 15, 2018. Your question was, is this meaningful? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I would say what's more meaningful when you look at this chart for Nokia. Now, Nokia, I don't know where they're headquartered. So when I see all these uh, gaps out here, I have to assume there's some type of currency conversion that's going on. So ordinarily, Mike, I would say, hey, you got to go look at the gap in this breakout that occurred out here. I would say that this date, February 1st, 2018, would be more meaningful. And when I say more meaningful, you know, I'd really be looking at the so-called top of the gap or bottom of the gap. Uh, that would be the $4.85 level. Um, again, there's, I just think, I, like, I don't know this for, for certain, but this, this chart just simply looks to me like, uh, there's some currency conversion stuff going on. So let's do this here, Michael. Let's just go to the other charts, try to answer your question. Your question is, you know, uh, did, can I recommend going long? So let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. See what pattern is out there. The heck? Oh, I see what I did. Kind of screwed up there. There we go. Uh, let's take a look at um, the daily time frame chart. What do we know about the daily time frame chart? You'll know by tomorrow. You'll see that yesterday was a, was a TD setup, nine count to the downside, nine consecutive closes below the low of the close four bars earlier. Today is the day after number nine. If tomorrow does not make a lower low, then you've got potential. The potential would say, hey, does price find resistance in Stevie's red line at 5.24 right now or not? But So there's potential there. It's not potential to step in in front of this train right now, but there's potential there. You've got the daily nine count out here. Let's look and see what we've got here from a weekly perspective on Nokia. Let's pull this chart over. Where are we at here? Where we're at in the weekly chart is this looks like it'll be week number eight. Now, when Nokia, NOK, made its most recent high, which was back in February of 2019, 20, 2019, it happened to be on bar number eight. Eh, will this be a bar number eight to the downside? I don't know, but it could be. Of course, it could always be bar number nine or bar number 10, so to speak, out there. But you've got the potential here in the weekly, so it says keep paying attention to the daily. Again, if tomorrow there's a lower low, then you're going to refer back to wait for the weekly to form its patterns out here because the daily will, in essence, have, I use the term recycled or just simply move lower and ignore that count. And it just tells you that you have a lot of momentum, not you, but sellers have a lot of momentum to the downside because they didn't even stop to take a break after that nine count pattern, which takes a lot of energy. And the monthly chart out here, as I pull over my other set of tools, nothing here to assist us other than it's suggesting that if there's a bottom where price is targeting, it's back in November of 2016. And that's a low of 3404 and a high of 453. You're at 502 right now. So do I recommend stepping in front of this thing to a long position? No. But you may be getting close and uh, maybe check back in with me on uh, Thursday. 
I guess we could even look at it tomorrow during the show if you just remind me. So, Mike, thanks for writing in. I hope that answers your question with regard to what the charts are telling me. No other requests out there, whether it's it. Oh, oh, I closed out the den. What the heck happened here? I didn't do that. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. Phew. It just disappeared from my screen. Whew. Okay. All right. Good. So we're good there. All right. So with three minutes to go here uh, in this session, what should we take a look at? Nobody's requesting anything that I'm aware of. So let's go to what is the logical thing, right? The logical thing is, uh, I'm going to guess, is what's going on with gold, especially because you got the GDX up 35 cents and gold is up two bucks. So what do we see here in gold? Here's one of the things that I like when I take a look at gold right now. And that's going back to the five hour time frame chart out here. So in the five hour time frame chart, what we can see is that when it formed its bottom at two o'clock in the afternoon, back on the trading day of May the 2nd, you had both a, uh, a TD setup nine count, you also had wave number seven out there. So two, 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 indicating signals to suggest that a bottom could be in, just like we looked at for Nokia out here. Now, what we really like about yesterday and this morning's and this afternoon's action is on the five-hour time frame, we can see that Stevie's red line turned green at 9 o'clock this morning. And when it turned green, price was pulling back right into it. That's when the price oscillator, I'm not showing that, difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 and 39, is at zero. And when it's at zero... That's where you're really looking for the signal. What's the message of the markets? Well, in this case here, it was a test and rejection and a move to the upside. So this is positive. What will be more positive for gold on the five-hour time frame chart is its ability to take out the high from 5 p.m. back on May the 1st. And that price level is 1289.40. If Goldilocks can close above 1289.40 out here, it's going to tell us that a change in trend and that that was a Fairly decent, not fairly, a good bottom on the five-hour time frame chart for Goldilocks. Well, interestingly enough, maybe not interesting to you, but interesting to Stevie is take a look at the daily time frame chart. What's the daily time frame chart tell us? The daily time frame chart tells us that price got back yesterday and today just simply to test its red line. It's still red. It has a falling price. Well, it has a rising price oscillator, which happens to be below zero. But the next key level for gold is going to be from the trading session a few days ago. That was on the trading day of May Day out there. May Day, you'll see a little blue line across my screen. Well, that price level out here is 1289.40. I don't recall what we were looking at on the five hour time frame chart. My memory's not that good, but it's somewhere in that general vicinity. So closing above that is good. And then on the daily, the key will be or should be that descending trend line that comes off of the high from February 20th and then the next high of March 25th, that becomes your touch points. But right now, it appears to Stevie, San, that gold is making that rally attempt. Nothing really big here. It's been very subtle in taking a look at Goldilocks out there, very subtle. But that's what we do here at the show. We show you the subtle things that most traders overlook. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, Dow's off 543. Uh, let's, uh, let's go take a look at this. So the GDX, I had mentioned the GDX being up 36 cents. John and the Den mentioned the GDX and what it was, what, uh, what we had uh, looked at a couple of days ago was how the GDX had formed a brand new daily profile out there. The bottom of that box is 2027. The top is 2130, 2104. It's a bearish structured box. So watch for resistance in that 2104 to 2130 level. But before the GDX can get up, up there it needs to close over this 2067 what is it 2067 we don't see it on these charts do we No, because these charts here don't have stevie's red line now what we know because the line is red is that the price oscillator is below zero so what you don't want to see take place today necessarily john or anybody else is for price to stop at that resistance point it's truly priced at uh, we're, we're at 2067 2066 is Stevie's red line a close above that would be one more indication of at least price continuing and resuming higher now on this chart here when you take a look at my little blue dash lines that price point is out at 2110 2110 being another key resistance level out there um, so watch the 2067 I say 20 you know 2067 a nice close above that uh, a close above Stevie's red line then says you have a rising price oscillator, even though it's below zero. But if it's rising, that is a good thing out there. So that is on the GDX. Uh, Jim wrote in and asked if I would just simply uh, give a review of Apple. So let's go do that. AAPL is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And uh, let's go see what Apple is doing. It's down lower, down by about six bucks. But what is it actually doing out here from a technical perspective? So here's one of the things that we know. I've got some red lines on my chart out here. And those red lines were showing uh, potential resistance. In other words, it was showing a gap to the downside, kind of like in Nokia. I wanted to go to Nokia and look at the gaps because they have meaning, but not so much when you've got currency issues here. There, We don't have the currency issues inside of Apple. 
Apple. And on November the 2nd, uh, Apple had gapped to the downside with volume of about 91 million shares. And as it was being tested, it was with 64 million shares. And you had a little shooting star candle that formed as well on May Day out there. So shooting star, the opposite of a hammer, uh, important because it can identify a top just like a hammer can, not always identify a bottom. In the case of Apple, the pullback right now, it's it formed a brand new profile today, Jim. And that profile is within the old profile. This just suggests that support should be at 200.73. We're at 201.90 and 201.90. Uh, 201.47 has been the low of the day. Watch 200.73. The close below that would be the uh, would be the second close. Third close below the bottom of a box, really since uh, since this thing had formed a since this thing got above resistance, the top of a profile on January 30th out here. That's what I see on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, no real great information out here for us from a profile standpoint because you're down at 176. From the monthly standpoint, 187.84 is the top of the box. That's a possible target if 200.73 fails to hold the support, but 197.86 is the top of the quarterly profile, so that would be up first. That would be next up. As to the daily time frame chart, here's something else that we know. When price was moving higher, doing less relative energy back here on May Day, that very next session, you had a uh, you had a uh, bearish reversal signal out here, so all this suggests lower price. So I would say use I don't know whether you're long or you're short. You wanted the review out here. Use that level of 200.73 to give you a great indication as to what Apple's true intentions are. At this stage, that's support, and until it's broken, it will remain as support. So Jim, thanks for writing in. That is what Apple looks like. And no other questions at the moment, so I got to figure out where do we go that is useful to you. Although, let me just check, see if there's any other questions. There is. Okay, good. Good checking. So here, Art writes in, what's our outlook on the dollar? So let's go take a look at the U.S. dollar index out here. Let's do it. Uh, let's look at the June contract. Yeah, now, this is going to have a 10 or 15 minute delay, I believe, on this. 10-minute uh, delay, um, just simply. So it's going to be slightly different, Art. I've got the U.S. dollar trade at 97.40 uh, out here. So from a daily perspective, what price what price is doing right now is it is below. Well, let me let me get it up going up here too. Although, let me go ahead and do that. I'll put the. I uh, uh, didn't like that. Okay. So I've got to, and I apologize, kind of a stutter there. I wanted to get the other charts going. And so, Art, what I need to do is I need to get the U.S. dollar index, the, the oh, man, why is this slow? The continuous contract. Okay, I got to, I have a way around that. Uh, so let me get that up on the screen. It, oh, jeez, Louise. That wasn't what I wanted. Sorry about that. Um, kind of doing a poor job here of multitasking. But uh, that's okay, guys. This is called Stevie Perseverance Roads, and I never, ever, ever, ever give up. Never give up. Okay, so here's what we know, Art. Uh, in taking a look at these charts, you got price below the daily profile, which is 97.42. If price can close above that level, you see it bounce to 97.92. Uh, no topping pattern with regard to the U.S. dollar index from a weekly profile standpoint, and because I'm using the June contract, I don't have enough data for monthly or what have you. I want to see, though, do I have do I have the U.S. dollar index in a synthetic version out here? I don't believe that I do, so I can't do that. Okay, so now, Art, what you're going to force me to do is come over and take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart with my other tools out here. And so let's just do a wave count. Let's see what took place as price was moving higher. Gets to wave number four. Is that a big deal? No, not really. Um, on the weekly, what do I see? What do I see? What do I see? Um, I see the. I see a. I see a, a. A butterfly cell pattern out here. It looks like this. Let's see if it picks this up, or whether I got to make another change here. Nope, it doesn't. So here's the butterfly cell art that took place inside the U.S. dollar index out here. 
Uh, and this is going to be pretty much approximate. But but if you take a look at this, here's your butterfly pattern where, in essence, price exceeds our start point, which was that wide-ranging bar on March the 7th. And the reason why we call this a, a butterfly, it didn't make a 1.272 extension 1.19 was because of that bearish and key reversal session out here are that formed so there's the pattern but here's the bearish reversal signal on april 26 so this says that u.s dollar index could head lower out here or should head lower as long as price remains below 97.46 that was stevie's green line by the way that was the daily what's the uh, weekly time frame chart here show me a uh, weekly time frame chart that's weird hmm Wait a minute here. What's the deal? Well, I don't know what the deal is there. Whoa. Okay. Art. Uh, let me see if I can uh, configure this slightly different when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's off about 512. Be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, um, Art, 
Uh, I couldn't get my other system working. I'll, I'll work on that. Hopefully, I'll remember to do that this evening. But 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 nonetheless, let's just take a look at the weekly time frame chart. So we established on a daily time frame that there was a sell signal. It was a butterfly sell signal inside the U.S. dollar index. It's trading below the daily profile, so additional pullback. Now, pullback to where? Let's assume it pullbacks. And in here, what we can see is clearly in taking a look at the weekly chart. You can see the trend lines that uh, the uh, U.S. dollar on a weekly basis basis is dealing with. First, take a look at the high from the week of November 12th, the high of December 10th, the high of March 4th, and you can see that price stopped right in its tracks, right there. Um, you know, the, so, so that's a beautiful thing, uh, at least with regard to identifying, you know, tops and bottoms. Price would need to close above, I would have to say, that level. That level, to give you an idea, is 97.66, right around there. If price does get above that, closes above that, then you've got another trend line, simple trend line from November 6th, that high, the shooting star on August the uh, 13th, uh, and then it connects all the way back to November 12th. And so, you know, that level, as far as where price would move up to, about 98.62. You can also see just simply coming off of the lows here in early September, September 17th, I'd use, you know, January 7th using uh, January 28th. You can see that the rising trend line remains in place. So the U.S. dollar index may be pulling back out here. Um, but it can, it's going to continue to move. And all this makes sense, folks. All of this, at least it makes sense to Stevie out here, is that the U.S. dollar index, which has been rising ever since February of 2018, remember, the stock market likes, loves a strong U.S. dollar. Why? Why? because capital from Europe and elsewhere is going to flow right over here, right over here to the U.S. stock market, the U.S. dollar, treasury bonds. We're it, folks. You and I, this is the safety net across the globe. Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next after that. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. Thanks for being here. I'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday.